My name is Jose Debes. I am an associate professor at the University of Minnesota, and I will be talking to you about hepatitis delta infection with a focus in epidemiology and screening. I have nothing to disclose. I will be talking to you over the next several minutes about the general aspects of hepatitis delta, the overall epidemiology of the virus, and screening for hepatitis delta. General features. The virus is a small RNA virus that requires hepatitis B presence for infection. There are two distinct transmission pathways, either co-infection, which means a simultaneous infection with hepatitis B and D, or superinfection, which means that a patient with hepatitis B later gets infected with hepatitis D. Patients that are co-infected can progress to cirrhosis within two years, and they have a threefold increase in hepatocellular carcinoma risk compared to hepatitis B alone. Multiple studies worldwide have tried to address the epidemiology of hepatitis delta. These studies, over 2,000 of them, have different methodologies, specific populations, and they try different testing approaches, making it very difficult to standardize the epidemiology. However, it is estimated that between 4 to 16% of patients with hepatitis B also have hepatitis D, and historically, hepatitis D has been related to populations in West Africa and Eastern Europe. The most important risk factors for hepatitis delta are intravenous drug use, HIV co-infection, hepatitis C co-infection, hemodialysis, and high-risk sexual behavior. I would like to point you to this study on the prevalence of hepatitis delta, which looked at 2,100 studies worldwide and focused on 282 studies, encompassing 122,000 people with hepatitis B surface antigen positivity from all six WHO regions. The authors also look at general and hepatology clinic populations. They found that the general population prevalence of hepatitis delta is 0.16%. Among those with hepatitis B, it is 4.5%, with some variation according to continent. They also found that in hepatology clinics, the prevalence of hepatitis delta was 16%. And this can help explain that large gap between 4 and 16% as patients that are referred to hepatology clinics are probably sicker and with higher liver enzymes. The study also found that certain countries like Mongolia, Moldova, Gabon, Togo, and Mauritania also had higher, unusually higher, prevalences of hepatitis delta. They also found certain risk factors similar to the ones I mentioned before, but I like to emphasize people who inject drugs, which is a strong risk factors for hepatitis delta. In the United States, it is estimated that 3 to 7% of patients with hepatitis B also have hepatitis D, and it is more common in those with hep C, HIV, and IV drug users. Genotype 1 is the most common ones, and it is more frequent among immigrant populations. Now, how to screen and why to screen for hepatitis delta? We screen with hepatitis D antibody, which is a simple ELISA test. And why do we screen? Because we could potentially treat the virus. We can also perform a closer follow-up on patients addressing early complications and HEC. We can provide recommendations for lifestyle modifications, and we can also evaluate close contacts. Different liver societies have different screening recommendations for hepatitis delta. The European and Asia-Pacific societies recommend to screen everyone that is hepatitis B positive for hepatitis D. The American Association for the Study of Liver Disease, in their 2018 recommendations, advise to screen for hepatitis D only those patients with hepatitis B that are at high risk as defined in this slide. I'd like to point out that the general expert consensus is that everyone infected with hepatitis B 
should be screened for hepatitis D with a hepatitis D antibody. How often to screen is a question that comes up frequently. If there are no risk factors, one-time screening for hepatitis delta is sufficient. If there are risk factors like intravenous drug use, then consider once a year screening for hepatitis delta. I would like to mention reflex testing for hepatitis D. This means that in every patient that is hepatitis B surface antigen positive, automatically the lab will send a hepatitis delta antibody screening test. This recent study from Spain showed that reflex testing increased by five times the detection of hepatitis delta. It is important to understand that 60% of these patients that were hepatitis delta positive had no risk factors for hepatitis delta. In summary, hepatitis delta only occurs in hepatitis B positive individuals, and every patient with hepatitis B is at risk for hepatitis D. Those at higher risk for hepatitis D include HIV, HCV positive, IV drug users, patients on hemodialysis, and commercial sex workers. Certain countries in Africa and Asia have a higher prevalence, but there is insufficient knowledge of the overall prevalence, and most guidelines recommend to screen every patient that is hepatitis B positive for hepatitis delta, and we do so through a hepatitis D antibody. We hope you have enjoyed the lecture and learned from it. Thank you very much. The production of this hepatitis B online mini lecture was supported by funding from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention.